nothing I would prefer welcome you to more uh, than the study of the Word of God. It is refreshing. It is stimulating. It is uplifting. It is building. And how glad we are that we can meet together and build the superstructure of spiritual life, spiritual blessing, spiritual homes, spiritual business. God can be with us in every aspect of our lives. If you know it, say amen. amen. I am interested in real flesh and blood. If there has been anything that has occupied my life more than anything else, it's people. I love people. And if you were to take people out of the Bible, you'd have the two covers left, you know. There wouldn't be much there without people. And it's true with anything else. You take people out of it, and it's not any more what it should be. Uh, a few years ago, we had a great industry in this city called the Studebaker Motor Car Company. There were areas like the Philippines. That the first time I went to the Philippines, over half of all the cars on the road were Studebakers. Uh, they, they dominated the scene in the, in the nation of the Philippines. But uh, Washington, D.C. said it needed the president of Studebaker Company, and that man went to Washington to serve the government, and that, that company could not survive. They could not replace the brains and the push that that man Hoffman had in him. And so he served his country well, and Studebaker went bankrupt. We so depend upon people. Uh, your people. This church is people. This community is people. The Bible is people. Today, people, <laughs> people meet the IRS. How many have already done that? Well, not many hands went up. I have good news for you. In just a few weeks, you're going to meet them. Yeah. Simon Peter pays taxes. It has been said that taxes and death are the only two things that are sure. Oh, there are a few other things, but anyway, those are mighty sure. We read in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, and verse 24, remembering that Matthew was a tax collector. It would seem that this, this uh, story would be wrapped around him rather than Peter, because he knew the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service. It seemed that he would have been the one to have been the spokesman, but he was not. In Matthew 17, 24, when they were come to Capernaum, that little city that you can still see the ruins of it at the north end of the Sea of Galilee. They that received tribute came to Peter. Now that mean, means the tax collector. They that received the tribute. Tribute was Roman, Roman customs. They came to Peter and said, does your master pay taxes? <laughs> He'd be amazed a number of times that I've had people say to me, he says, preachers don't pay taxes, do they? They also get fined for not paying them. Are you here or not? Amen. I ought to know. I got fined. <laughs> you make a mistake and they work on you for quite a while. Verse 25, he saith, yeah. Yeah, he pays. <laughs> preachers pay taxes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus said to him, what thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? It's changed now. It's from both of us. Verse 26, Peter said, strangers. <laughs> uh, Jesus saith unto him, then, then are the children free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend. Go thou to the sea, cast a hook, take up the fish that first cometh up. When thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt... Find a piece of money, take it, give it to them for you and me. And we say, Lord, bless us as we study about, about Peter paying taxes. Verse 24 says, And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received the tribute money came to Peter and said, Does your master pay taxes? It is remarkable to me that if there came up a problem, Peter had the, way, the ability to find his way to the middle of it. So, some of us are uh, what they call accident-pronged. If anybody gets bumped, we get it. I, I am not one of those. I'm, I'm sorry. There are people that are accident-pronged. If there's going to be one, they get it. 
if anybody puts a car in the parking lot and, and it gets scratched, theirs are scratched. Well, uh, if there was something moving, Peter was moved. If there's something shaking, Peter got shook. If there's taxes to be paid, Peter was always facing the guy that wanted the money. The Revised Standard Version uh, says of this same verse in Matthew 17, 24, after Jesus' disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax came to Peter and said, doesn't your teacher pay temporal tax? Now, to begin with, Peter maintained that Christ kept the law. You know, that's, that's good, and good that Peter knew that. I don't know whether they had paid taxes before, but being on Jesus' side, he instantly said, yeah, you better believe it. And so in verse 25, he said, yeah, he pays. But when they came in the house, Jesus had a talk with him saying, what do you think, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom? Now, taxation was a popular subject. We read in Matthew 22, that's the same, that's the same book, you see, and verse 17, Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? There's always been rebellion around. It didn't just start. It's been here all the time. Verse 18 says, Jesus perceived their wicked and said, Why do you tempt me, you hypocrites? Show me the tribute money or the tax money. And they brought unto him a penny, and he said, Whose is this image and superscription? They said, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, you give unto Caesar the things that belong to Caesar, but you also give unto God the things that belong to God. That got him in a corner. You say, what in the world could he mean there? Well, their face bears the image of God. They could give, you know, themselves to God. And also after they had paid their taxes, they could go to God and say, hey, Lord, I'm going to pay my tithe now. Some of us pay our taxes willingly and our tithes unwillingly. Well, sometimes both of them are unwillingly. Let's don't go into that. That's a little bad. Verse 22, And when they heard these words, they marveled, and they left Jesus and went their way. Now, you can jump into Romans uh, chapter 13 and verse 7, and it says, Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, pay taxes when it's due, Custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear is due, honor to whom honor is due. And so the great Apostle Paul kept up this whole business of paying taxes, of what can you do about it, how should you handle the problem. And now in these instances, you see exactly how a Christian should handle the problem. And all the people said, all right. At this point, Jesus did not declare himself against the Roman Empire. Now I want you to let that come in on you strong. The Roman Empire was corrupt. You can't find anything Jesus said about it. The biggest corruption that Jesus found was in the preachers. He says, you're a corrupt bunch of religious leaders. And he came after them for being corrupt. Never said anything in the world about the corruption of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was oppressive. It was oppressive. You do not find Jesus speaking against the oppressions of the Roman Empire. He spoke about the oppressions of the religious leaders. The oppressions of the religious leaders. Now, you ought to let that sink in a little bit. You want me to tell you something? If you got the religious leaders of this country saved, you could change this world. I mean saved. Not full of the Holy Ghost. That'd come later after they get saved. In Matthew 17, 27 that we were reading, Jesus said, Lest we offend, say offend. Go thou to the sea, cast a hook, take up the fish that first cometh up when you have opened his mouth. Then thou shalt find a piece of money, take it, give to them for you and me. There's a lot of truth there that we're going to work with. The first is, lest we offend. You know, isn't that amazing? For them to say, well, we pay taxes, but he doesn't. I'm glad that he entered into all the travail of human beings. Can you say amen? <laughs> when you pay taxes, say, well, Jesus did too. Bless God. 
Are you here or not? Got a few weeks before you have to pay. You don't be too sad about it. Let's look at that, that verse 27 real careful now. He said to Peter, go to the sea, take a hook, take up a fish. The first one, open his mouth, take out the money, take it, and for you and me. Now, that, there's a whole lot that we're going to say about those. Number one, take up a hook, but they used the fish by net. Almost all their fishing was by net. Still is. I don't think I have ever seen a fisherman put a hook in the Sea of Galilee. I've been there so many times. They may, I just haven't seen one. Now, if a guy's always used a net to tell him to use a, a hook, makes him kind of angry. Because remember one time Peter put in a net and caught 150 at one time? Well, who wants to catch one at a time if you can catch 150? How many are glad for obedience? Even if it's against what you're used to doing and against what you're capable of doing, you do what Jesus tells you to do. The greatest victors in life is obedience to God. Just doing the easy things that he says. So take a hook. Why did he say go to the sea? If Peter had been a farmer, I think he'd have sent him out to the corn patch. But, but Peter was not a farmer, didn't know anything about corn, so he didn't send him out to the corn patch to get some corn in order to pay the tax with it. If he'd have been a raiser of poultry, he'd have said take a couple of your fine cocks and Take them over there and sell them and pay the bill. But, but he didn't have any, any chicken, so he couldn't tell him to do that. But he was a fisherman. You getting it? Jesus moves in on the thing that you're acquainted with. Jesus moves in just where you're adoptable to it. He said, he said, go to the sea. This is where his experience was. Then the next thing I like about this was it says, take the first fish that bites. Glory be to God. He knew Peter was nervous. If Peter had to take the sixth fish, I don't think he'd ever made it. He's too nervous for that. But he could, take the, he could work with the first one. How many glad that God understands you? He knows you're a little nervioso. He said the first fish that comes up, that's the one. Not the second one, not the third one. The first one. How many glad God works on first? Then it says, you open his mouth. Some of you have still been there yelling, in the name of Jesus, open that mouth. I said, open. Well, sometimes you have to do it. <laughs> it says, you stick your finger in there and you might get it bitten too. You put your finger then open that mouth. And said on the inside of that mouth, you're going to find money. Now if that wasn't the most ridiculous thing that had ever been said up to that moment. Now here's the most interesting part about it. He said, you take that money and you go to Rome and you pay taxes for two, you and me, not for 12. Those other guys had to find their own money. Are you still here? Isn't that amazing? He specifically said this tax, he could have said, now listen, on both sides of the jaw, There'll be a gold coin. Get him on the right and get him on the left. Pay all of our taxes. That would have been about the way I'd have done it, you see. Jesus said, this miracle is for you and me. There are some miracles just for you and Jesus, you know. They're not for the whole community. They're just for you and Jesus. You say, why? I want to tell you something. This action was against all of Peter's reasoning and all of Peter's experience and no doubt his insides were so angry he didn't know what to do. Peter had already caught more than 10,000 fish out of that sea and he'd opened a lot of mouths and he had never found a coin. So this was against all the experience of a man that had had his hand in a lot of mouths. Got nothing. 
you see. Did you know God can bless you where you hadn't been blessed in the same place? You say, I've just done this a hundred times. Wait a minute. If God says do it, do it again. Yeah. It's when God says doing it, it'll work. And you better believe it. Can you say amen? amen. And so, although it was against his, his experience of a lifetime, and sticking his hand in fish's mouths, it took faith. And it took humility, you know. The hardest man to talk to is an expert. And an expert is a little spurt away from home. <laughs> but he's hard to talk to. He knows it all. And, and, and Peter was a zealous fisherman. It took a lot of faith to obey and to do as he was told to do. This action was against his knowledge, his brain. It was against his normal, regular life that he lived for so many years. And Peter says, I believe. Did you know if he had doubted, the miracle would never have happened? If he had said it can't be, Jesus said, you're right. Sure can't. So when the Lord says to do something, it don't matter where human reasoning has any relationship to it at all. It'll work if Jesus says it'll work. How many are glad for that? We're so glad that when God says it'll work, it don't matter what man says anyway, it will work. Now, this outdid all the fish stories around the Sea of Galilee. You know, you know, fishermen and hunters are real interesting. Man, I caught a fish. Shrink it, shrink it, shrink it. You know. You should have seen that buck I shot. You know, this was a fish story. Nobody else had a story like Peter had. You want me to tell you something? In 48 hours, there's 24 men got out and tried to catch a fish and see if they could find a coin. But they didn't find any. It wasn't just regular that coins were in fish's mouths. But if Jesus says there'll be one there, it'll be in the first one. Just the one he says it'll be and it'll be there. Can you say amen? amen. They say, now how in the world can a Galilean fish have a Roman coin? It was a real drachma. It wasn't, it wasn't something that dropped out of outer space. It was a Roman coin. It was a coin of the realm. How many have a few little things you're going to find out when you get to heaven? I'm going to say, Lord, how did that fishy get a hold of that coiny? <laughs> just, just. I just like to know, please, if you don't mind. But there are a lot of things I, I want to know. How many got a few things you want to know when you get to heaven? Hey, brother. Not only that a fish had a coin, how in the world could that one fish who had that one coin, how could he ever be where Peter dropped that hook? With a million fish in the Sea of Galilee, how'd he make it around there right on schedule? Evidently, fish got sense too. When God's pushing them, they just move wherever God wants them. And then the nicest thing about the story is, you know, poor old Peter only had to catch one. Sometimes we think we have to work so hard to get blessed. Peter only had to catch one fish. His day's work was done. Hey, that was nice, wasn't it? He didn't have to sit on the bank all day waiting for him, saying, dear God, dear God, if there be a fish with a coin, send him. Please do. No, didn't have to do that at all. The spirit of Jesus that day in blessing the Roman Empire with, with, with money, in blessing the Roman Empire with money, 
And I, I'd like to tell you that I am one person that I gladly, I gladly pay my, uh, my taxes. I, you possibly never met anybody else like that. And I could get a lot of reductions. I take people out to eat all the time. I never take it off my taxes. I can, but I don't ever take it off. Because I, I want to pay. If you were to talk to our accountant here, he'd tell you that I'm the funniest guy that ever was. I said, put in there more salary for me into the books, please. Or why? I want to pay more taxes on it at the end of the year, please. I, I know he wonders about me when I tell him to do that because it has to go through the IBM computer for it all to come out right, you see. You say, why do you want to pay it? Oh, well, I don't mind. Bless God. You say, what if they waste it? That's their problem. It's not mine. But I like to just look the whole world in the face and say, bless God, I've blessed everybody I could find. Just bless you. God will give me more anyway. Man, you're drab today. I said, preach this another time of the year. Anyway, the attitude that Peter had toward the government at that moment, he continued to have it when he was a mature elder of the church in 1 Peter 2, 13. Listen to what he says. He says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. Look, for the Lord's sake. This, this is 1 Peter 2, 13. For the Lord's sake. For the Lord's sake. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Whether it be to the king as supreme, where you have to, or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. Now that's, that, 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 you better read that one again. You see, you're not getting it very, very good there. Let me read it a little faster for you. The great apostle said, now submit yourselves to the ordinances of man for the Lord's sake. Do it for Jesus' sake. If it's a king, or if it's a president, or if it's your local mayor, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. There's a praise for doing things well in your life. To have a well-ordered life. Are you here? A well-ordered life that's walked straight. <laughs> And for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence. Now, that's the reason I live like I do. Right there, that word. That you might put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. That you just put them to silence. You see, when someone says something wrong about you, financially otherwise, you just put them to silence. You just live so beautiful and so good before them. Then look at what verse 16 says. As free, we are free, and not using this liberty for a cloak of maliciousness. Just because you can get by with it, you don't, you don't get by with it. But as the servants of God. <laughs> look at that verse 17. It is just great. It says, honor all men. You'll have a bushel of friends if you'll do that. Don't downgrade anybody. Don't say little stinky things to people. Just be nice to people. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God and honor the king. <laughs> it says, now in God we're free. Say free. free. We're free. But in that freedom, honor your fellow man. Give him honor. It's all right. He can't get too much. Love the brotherhood of the body of Christ. You know, there are people that have very few friends. And they'll tell you, I don't have any friends. Well, no, honey, no reason. Honey, you too much like a pickle, you know. You got to get sweet. Love the brotherhood. Love, love the body of Christ. Stick around this auditorium a little bit here till the traffic gets out. You'll have a bushel of friends. They're all over the place down here. Yeah. He says, fear the Lord. That means understand God, care for God. Then he said, honor the king. Now, 
There's a spirit in America uh, that teaches us not to honor those in authority. That the mass media wants to cut to pieces anyone that's in a position to find anything wrong with them they can and greatly accelerate it, you see. But the Bible says that we should honor those that are in authority. You say, what do you mean by honor them? Just respect their office that they're in and, and, and pray for them that they won't make bad decisions against poor people. It's always poor people that get hurt. Just, just name it and they get hurt. You, you, you can have communism that says it's for the laboring man. <laughs> Who gets killed? The laboring man. He's one of, he gets it. Don't matter. You say, let's change office. Honey, no need of changing. They've been doing that 6,000 years. That's all they've done is change it. And it's better now than it ever has been. But changing it's not going to do much good. The, the poor one gets hurt every time. Look in Poland, who's getting hurt? The laboring man. Yeah. They call it the labor party in power and the laboring man is the guy that, that, that's getting hurt over there. And so uh, let's honor those that should be honored. And above all, let's love one another. And he says, now that's the way to live. That's the way to live. So Peter carried through from his life for the Lord Jesus, the freshness of that spirit. You don't have to hate the government. You don't have to speak evil of dignitaries. Just walk before God. We only live here just a little short time. Just a little short time. You're not here very long. You're just, just passing by this place then you're going to be in heaven forever. It's better to live right. And to live happy while you're doing it.